But let me ask a question. When you picture overflow, what what comes to your mind? What do you think about? Perhaps you're thinking about a, a coffee cup that's filled to the brim, and if you put anything more in it, it just keeps going. Or maybe uh, it's a water flowing over a dam, or uh, maybe 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 a overflow. Maybe it's that space that is uh, just outside of a of a concert venue, and that's where people come because they've got no more seats. So they have to go for the overflow. Amen? Amen. So, Harold, you need to turn those lights off down there. Oh. So, um, just the ones on the far left. Yeah. The idea, though, is when you think of overflow, what do we think of? I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I want you to hear about God. Are you ready for this? God is a God of overflow. Listen, what did I say? God is a God of overflow. I want, I'm going to say this a few times. I want to make sure I've got your attention because for some reason, most of us tonight seem to be very easily distracted. Focus. Eyes. God is a God of overflow. Amen. And here's the deal. He de desires us to have an overflowing life. And as we're going forward, we're going to be talking about this. As a matter of fact, uh, this week, any, uh, who, who, who wants to tell me what this week's memory verse is? This week's memory verse. Brother Harold? If we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill, fulfill, the, lust fulfill the, the lust of the flesh. I was going to have the, the video read for you, but I'm going to... I'm going to read for you myself. Uh, the 23rd Psalm. Are you ready for this? Yes. Psalm 23. This is a psalm of David, or a poem, if you will. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And verse 5 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. <clears throat> my cup runs over. Surely, mercy and goodness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can we just pray one more time tonight, Father? Father, in the name of Jesus, open up our minds that we can understand, our ears that we can hear, but Lord, also open up our hearts that we can receive that which you're pouring into us tonight, the Word of God. And Lord, let your Spirit find liberty, find a, an easy path, Lord, into transforming us into your likeness. That, Lord, that we are surely here tonight to believe that you have come, Lord, not just to make us feel good, but to fill us to overflowing in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. So, here's the thing. So, um, followers of God throughout time, when you, when you watch and you see the ones that follow God, uh, they didn't have it easy. They, 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 and sometimes that's what we try to tell people. That's how you try to entice people into coming to faith. Just come to Jesus. It'll all be better. Yeah. And, uh, and I, my testimony is this. When I came to Jesus, I realized I was in a world of trouble. It did not all get better. What happened was the truth came out. What happened was I realized, I'm in, I'm, wait, I'm, I'm in a whole lot of trouble. And so what I realized, too, is walking in faith is there's always going to be something. That is going to try to ensnare you. And, you know, Brother Harold quoted Galatians 5 tonight where he says, you know, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill, fulfill the lust of the, of the flesh. flesh. And did you know what happens with the lust of the flesh? The lust of the flesh is what, what causes us to sin. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? No, it's not. Listen, we might say it's the world. We might say it's things outside. But no, that's not where sin comes from. Sin actually comes from within. Did you hear that? And the Bible says that once, and even the, even the thought. So once the thought, once it's conceived, it gives birth to the to the action. Once the action is performed, it gives 
birth to death. Mm -hmm. Amen? The, the wages of sin is death. death. <clears throat> so today, how do I say this except to, to put it this way? Believers, say believers. Believers. Those who really follow the Lord, those who, who, who have understood what it means to really seek after him passionately, do you know that believers have the opportunity to be greatly blessed with the presence of a Holy Spirit. You think about this. It's that Holy Spirit who is described as an overflowing spirit of water given by Jesus himself. The Bible says, as, as Jesus spoke, is it was expedient for him to go away. and Because if he didn't go away, he couldn't send another one just like himself. Right. The spirit of truth and the spirit that would would fill us to overflowing and psalm 23 is a favorite verse to many people mm -hmm. it's probably been preached at more funerals than any other verse in the whole face of the planet yeah amen but i mean it, it brings comfort it brings encouragement and, and when we read this we readily find the psalm it reminds us and it reminds believers that God is with us. For you, in verse 4, for you are with me. You are with me. But what does it mean when the psalmist says in the fifth verse, he says, my cup runneth over. You see, it's made up of two parts. And this is what I looked at and saw. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a, a poetic section, a, section a, a second poetic section that we see the gratitude of God's provision through this cup of, uh, uh, how do I say this? You, you know the song, I Can Only Imagine? Yes, I can only imagine. You, you know, you want to hear God's voice, right? What do you do? Stillness. Tune to? Vision. Flow, vision. vision. I want to see what God's saying. I, I Listen, when God speaks, I want to at least see his lips. Well, I want to watch his mouth. I want to know what he's saying. Somebody say amen. 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 And so when we look at this, we see that there's, there's this imagery here in this, in this scripture. That in, in, in the psalmist uses it in two sections. The first section consists of this image of God as a strong shepherd. And look at this. He caringly watches over his sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. He leads me. He restores my soul. He leads me. For his, watch this, but it's for his name's sake. It's not for my sake. It's for his glory, which is for our good. Yep. You've heard me preach that over and over. Yep. So despite this overwhelming imagery of a pastor, as it were, because, you know, that's what pastors are. In a sense, we're shepherds. Yes. So when we, when we look at this, it compares God also to a host. Mm -hmm. yeah. Think about this. He's the shepherd, he's the pastor, he's a caregiver, he's an overseer. That's what pastors do. But wait, here's something else that he is. He's a host. You know, and we read in, in uh, when, when Paul was talking to Timothy, you know, he said that um, uh, that, that uh, the man or woman of God, that the minister must be given to hospitality, apt to teach. Amen? Uh, and when you think about these things, you'll see that what he's saying is, that, listen, you need to be like our Father who is in heaven. So when we look at this, this depiction, and it, it, it's a section of the psalm that compares God to a host at a banquet. I mean, it includes the second part of a, this rich picture of anointing and an, over, and, and an overflowing cup. And you think about this. My cup's just not full. It's overflowing. Mm -hmm. My cup runs over. I mean, that, that picture to me, it conveys this truth about God's abundant provision for the lives of those who follow him. God is more than enough in all the world, in all the creation. God is more than enough. Someone the other day said, and I, and I always look for that cue, to some, oh, God, God is just, you know, God, God is enough. I said, no, he's too much. <laughs> he's just too much. Amen? Amen. So let's look at this. So let's find out what this, what's going on. Where does this come from? From David, this, king, this, uh, this shepherd king, if you will. I mean, when we look at this, he's a, he's a shepherd king in hiding. He's a king, he's in hiding. I mean, the psalm has been used by a lot of people at funerals. I said that, right? Yeah. But isn't it a beautiful proclamation of trust? Yeah. It, it, it tells, it, it basically, we're proclaiming, I trust God. 
I'm trusting him with my care. I'm trusting him with my well-being. And when we look at this background as a shepherd, David, uh, he's he described the Lord as a shepherd who cares for his sheep. And so when you look at the focus, it is that David, it, it, God is David's leader and his provider. And you think about this, this is underscored by the image of God as a host. He's, oh, listen, look at this now, he's my leader, he's my shepherd, he leads me, he's my provider, he gives, he gives me what I need, I, I don't want, I don't, I shall not want, I'm going to lack nothing, but get this, he also prepares things, he prepares a table for me. Wait, he's preparing the table. I mean, David was familiar with hiding and running. We, go, we know about that. He knows about hiding and running. As a matter of fact, um, I don't have time to read the whole thing. 2 Samuel, uh, in the 24th chapter, uh, if, if you want to make a note of that, one of the things that happened with, Dan, with, with, I'm sorry, with David, uh, with David was that uh, David, <laughs> David was judged prideful. Because of his pride. Well, what did he do? Here's what happened. You'll have to go back and read. Not right now. Don't be distracted. That's why I give it to you. <laughs> Second Samuel chapter 24, verses 12 through 14. Read that later, but I'll just tell you what it says. But you might want to read what, what happened, what got him in that predicament. So, David was going to be punished by God. And, I, you know, I, I don't recall ever seeing another incident like this. But God basically sends the messenger to David and says, uh, "Here's the thing. You got. Uh, here's what's going to happen because of because of your pride. Because you took you took a census. You know, you you took a count. You started counting the people." He said, "Okay. Here's the thing. Three things: uh, a famine. Uh, you can be chased by your enemies, or you can have a plague. These are the three things. You pick one of these things. And this is and God says." Tell me what tell me what I what I should what I shall do to you for this thing that you have done. What is going to be your punishment? I mean, come come on, somebody. Let's see. Do you want the switch? Do you want the, the wooden spoon? Or do you want the boot? I mean, I don't know what is it. You take your pick. Uh, so Ashley's thinking about it. Switch hurts worse. But here's the thing. Watch this though. David he quickly turns down that option. Of being hunted by his enemies and you know why he turned that down because he'd had enough of that he'd already experienced being hunted by his enemies over and over and over I mean how many of you remember that king named Saul Saul was always on the hunt uh, Saul was all looking he relentlessly chased after David with the intent of taking his life because of this this young shepherd boy who had been anointed as the chosen king of Israel, remember this, he's a shepherd king in hiding. Well, he had to go into hiding several times. You find he's hiding out someplace. He knew what it meant. He knew what it meant to be chased, and he knew what it was going to require. So he often, he took up residence hiding up in the cliffs and in caves. And, and just, just, you know, you think about this. This is a, this is a man, you know, he, he killed thousands, right? Uh, you remember what he did with that lion with his bare hands? But when it came time to being chased by his fellow man, he'd rather go hide. So later in his life, David also had to flee from Saul's son. And, and you, you, if you read the story, you'll find out how heartbreaking this was. Because did you know that Saul and Abs or David and Absalom were pretty close? But now he's running from the vengeful son. And after this son has rebelliously declared, declared himself king, Absalom says he's king, David traveled to the Mount of Olives to hide in caves. And once again, there he is, hiding away from being pursued by his enemies. So now he's surrounded by his enemies. He's experiencing the <clears throat> threat of death. This was nothing new. He's been doing this most of his adult life, hiding out. Because he was being pursued by somebody. Here he is. It was nothing new. And despite these events, though, David trusted in the Lord to protect him and to provide for him. And Psalm 23 kind of paints the word picture, doesn't it? I mean, it, it's, it's a beautiful poem, if you think about this. Psalm 23, verse 5, in the Living Translation, says it more clearly. Because what it does, it focuses on something from God. 
it focuses on God's abundant blessings. Mm -hmm. And what it says in the Living New Living Translation, my cup overflows with blessings. My cup overflows with blessings. And you'll hear me say this, the scripture says it, but I quote it, out of the abundance of the heart, my mouth, mouth speaks. If all you find is negativity and all you can do is complain, you might want to check yourself. You might want to find out, can I say my cup runs over? Can I say that my cup is overflowing with blessings? Or are my, tr my problems, my troubles so great that they're actually squelching God's blessings from my life, squeezing them out? I mean, not only is David's cup described as a, it being full to the brim, but it's running over. It's splashing out. It's spilling. And based on on that the the, uh, the host this host guest relationship I mean you can see this picture it clearly teaches that God provides a whole lot more than what you would ever expect you remember what it said yes about, about God more than you could ever imagine Be beyond your wildest dream that is God we, we spend our lives trying to figure him out we, we spend a lot of time, and we once, and have you ever noticed this? Once you think, you, oh, I know exactly what's going to happen because I, I know God well enough. I know exactly what he's going to do. And, and sometimes we, we want to treat him that way, just like we treat a good friend. We'll finish their sentences. Just to be clear, you don't ever want to be caught finishing God's sentence. Hello? I can tell you right now, my wife hates it if I, if I finish what, what, what she's going to say. I need to let her finish. Yeah. But, Somebody say amen. amen. So the so the, here's the thing, David. He's not a stranger to harsh conditions. He's not a stranger to hiding away, living in fear of some enemy coming to take, you know, coming to overtake him, coming to take his life. David's blessed state was because God was present. It was because God was providing for him both physically, spiritually, and in hardship. Now, the enemy surrounded him, and, and you think about this. You, you, all these enemies are surrounding us, and sometimes we think we've got it all figured out. I mean, my life is forfeit. It's, all, it's over. It, it, it's done for me. And here he's surrounded, and it seemed like Everything was uncertain, but David knew that he could trust his life to God. Not just figuratively, not just in an imaginary way. See, David's blessed state was because God was present and God was providing. This is about having a relationship, a real relationship. How often? And we come and we want to study the Bible and we, we want to take these, these courses and things like that because we figure if we can get all this information, then we can figure God out. And as I said last Sunday when I was preaching, the more I read in here, the more many things don't make sense. But also the more I read in here, the more things don't have to make sense. I don't have to know it all. Remember a few months ago I said, listen, don't be a know-it-all. Don't even try. There's only one who knows it all. Isn't that what Jesus said? Yeah. He's the only one. He said, listen, I don't, Jesus said, listen, I don't even know. Only, only the Father knows. <laughs> only God knows. So his enemies have surrounded him. His future seems un uncertain, but he said, I'm going to trust God. And you know, God is trustworthy. He's trustworthy to provide for the needs of his people in the good times, in the bad times, in the mountain, in the valley. In the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Mm. Can I just say, tell you this? You can trust him. If you know he's with you. Here's the thing. What if you don't know that he's with you? What if it's, I hope he's with me. And just because you say he is doesn't mean he is. What would be good is if you said he is and he was. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. 
that he was really there, that he's really with you. And we go on and we see here again in Psalm 23, verse 5, it, it's a picture of an abundant blessing, a, a blessing that's overflowing. It's, it's having more than enough. And it carries over into the New Testament with Jesus because Jesus in his early ministry, he displayed an overwhelming generosity to do miracles. You, you know what the Bible says about the miracles Jesus did? They're not all recorded in these pages. No, no. Did you know that? Did, did you hear? Did you, did, you didn't know that? Did, did you know that? Mm -hmm. What did he say? If, if, if you read the Bible, you'll find out if all the miracles that Jesus did had been written, there wouldn't be enough books That's right. to hold them. The Bible wouldn't contain if it was just. It can't be contained in just 66 books. There's, it, listen, you, you think you think that G, that God is is enough? No, He's even more. Amen. So here He is. He's feeding five thousand. What did He do? Jesus provided a crowd beyond their needs with only five loaves of bread and two fish, a sack lunch. Mm -hmm. He fed five thousand people. And once get this, once everybody had received enough, the disciples had to go around and pick up the crumbs seven, because seven bushels. They had, they had bushel baskets full of food left over mm -hmm. out of five loaves, two fish. That's what God could do with, with a sack lunch. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. In another miracle, Jesus enabled Peter, James, and John to, to go out and to catch a multitude of fish. I mean, there were so many fish that the nets were full and they're bursting and the boats began to sink. With the abundance, I'll say abundance. abundance. They, they caught enough fish, there was more than enough. I'm believing that they caught their limit and some. Amen? <laughs> so for those who are believers in the church age, an even greater blessing is being given. I mean, think about this. Where one's cup can be said to be runneth, to runneth over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the King James because it seems to have a little more impact, right? Mm -hmm. well, my cup runneth over. I mean, that gift, what is that gift? Your cup that runs over. You want, let me tell you where you find that gift. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It's a free gift. If, listen, if you have received that salvation, if you receive salvation by grace through Faith. At that moment, it opens up the windows and doors, and it opens up the, 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 the passageway of heaven into your life. And the presence of the Holy Spirit, it says in John 14, 17, the Holy Spirit was given to every believer. Mm -hmm. You see, in, in, in Joel 2, 38, the Bible says that the Spirit was poured out on all flesh. But in John 14, 17, for the believer, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. He has a presence, an infilling of the Holy Spirit. And so for those of us today, Jesus promised that whosoever believes in me, listen, John 7, 38, whoever believes in me, as, the, as listen, as the scripture has said, not some Jesus that you're making up, not some Jesus that you're trying to mold into what you want it to be so that you can live your life the way you want to live. No, if you believe in me, as the scripture says, watch this, Rivers of living water will flow from them. So I go back to the idea, the, the, the imagery, if you can, of overflowing. And I, I, I picture, what, well, I actually, there's a couple places I drove this week. And I'm driving along in some places because there's no leaves on the trees. And I'm seeing some of these, um, the, these waterways. And you see these, I never saw this waterfall here. I didn't know there was a dam here. Because you can't see it when all the greenery comes out. But I'm picturing that. Did you, have you ever seen, have you ever been around with, and, and been close enough to the water that's going over a dam mm -hmm. and just feel the power? Mm -hmm. You can just imagine how awesome that is. Yeah. And, and I'm also amazed that that dam mm -hmm. is still mm -hmm. holding even more back. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So whoever had believes in me, the scripture said, rivers of living water will flow from within them, will flow from your bellies. I mean, with the imagery of overflowing water, Jesus spoke of the future. The future giving of the Holy Spirit, which had not yet been taken up, taken place yet. You know, that doesn't happen until the book of Acts, right? And what are we talking about then? We've just jumped all the way from, uh, from the Old Testament, all the way back to 1st and 2nd Samuel, all the way through Psalms. Now we're up in the book of Acts. And in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit was given. 
and is still graciously given today to all who place their faith in Jesus. Amen. Just recently, there was someone who was here, uh, who had been here with a group and visiting, and uh, I was I was totally stunned, uh, and I don't think he cared for the answer I gave him, but I gave him the truth, because he says, well, you know, there is no Holy Spirit anymore. You know, the, the, the Holy Spirit was taken away with the death of the last disciple. No. What? No, no, no. <clears throat> hey, where did you read that? <laughs> I, well, it's in the, but anyway, I'm, I'm, I, my point is, how many people... How, how can a person continue to live their life of faith without the Holy Spirit? It, you can't. You can't live the life of a Christian without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, without a, 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 an awareness that God is with me. Hello? Yes. So God provided David and the other Old Testament saints everything that they needed in their lives. And David, I love the way he illustrates the significance of God's abundance, that provision, that, that statement, my cup overflows, runs over. And followers of God throughout time, they experience hardships. We still, today, experience hardships. Some things haven't changed. Life is not always easy, but God was always faithful to meet them wherever they were suffering, whenever they were broken, whenever there was pain, whenever there was sickness, whenever there was something lacking, God would come in and he'd make up the difference. Amen. And some. I mean, think about today. You know, we believers, we're greatly blessed with the presence of the Holy Spirit who described as an, over, an overflowing spring of water, then he was given to us by Jesus. Living water. Amen. Living water. Not just, not anything stagnant, not anything stale. No, it's fresh. It's, it's a, what, what's this? It's the wellspring that bubbles from under, from up underneath. Amen. You know, that's where the cleanest water that comes from in, in the world, you know, those artesian springs and all that. That's where that, that sparkling water comes from that is so fresh uncontaminated and with the Holy Spirit the believer has everything that we need to live a life following God without the Holy Spirit you cannot watch this nobody comes to Jesus right except what except the Spirit draws and nobody goes to God except through Jesus so get this, the Holy Spirit brought you to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus points you to God, but it's the Holy Spirit that's going to continue to be with you. This is the Spirit of God. This is the Holy Spirit that's with you, walking with you, being with you everywhere you go, seeing that you stay on the path. Amen? Amen. And not only that, but God has given his followers even more than they need. Some of us, we just, well, if I could just get a little bit more. Can I tell you, you already have more than you can handle? Yes. Hello? Yep. Yep. Let me tell you what needs to happen. You need to start finding out what it is that God has called you to. You need to start recognizing what he's brought you through. Because he's going to take you on beyond this point to the next point. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Forgetting those things which are behind, going, pressing forward to those things that are, that, that are, are before us and looking to the high hope which is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. What else could a person want? Well, you're not going to get that high. You're not going to be elevated. You're not going to get that, reach that high elevation <laughs> without the help of the Spirit of God. Amen. I mean, even in the presence of his enemies, even with his hardships, even during death, a believer can find comfort in the fact that their cup runneth over. <laughs> well, what, what are you running over with? God's provision. You know, the writer said, though they slay me, yet shall I sure. Sure. serve him. So we get back again, Psalm 30, 23, verse 5. We, 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 should, it shouldn't be taken to mean just, of, uh, I'll say, in reference to material goods. It's not just material things that are going to be poured out in your life. Or, or don't, don't believe that, uh, that nothing bad is going to happen. You know what I found out? The more God poured into me, the more I knew I was going to face. Did you hear that? The more God gave me, the more he expected of me. 
if you receive something great from God, he expects something great in return. Mm -hmm. And can I tell you, you can't outgive him, so he's always provide for you the provision to do what he's called you to do and to complete the race that has been set before you. Amen? Amen. So Christians can live joyful lives, uh, you know, through that gift of salvation. Go back to Ephesians chapter 2. Because that salvation in Jesus Christ, that's an overwhelming blessing. And you know what? You, you, you receive the gift, but you can only walk in that gift by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, throughout the Bible, God has been shown to generously provide for his followers. And you can truly experience life when your cup does what? Rock over. Rock over. Amen. Overflows. So you might say, well, what does it look like to be filled and overflowing? So you'll probably hear this on and off for a while as I, uh, as we close the service. And as your pastor, I want to bless you. And so at the, end, at the close of a service, you're going to hear something like this as a benediction. Now, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Did you hear that? Yes. Just so you know, I'm not quite finished yet, but we will be. But that's what you're going to hear. You're going to hear it again. When you picture overflow again, what comes to your mind? Might, right now, maybe you've got even more images than when we first started. You know, you might have thought, you may have thought of the waterfall. You might have thought of a, uh, you know, may, maybe your, your, your glass of water or maybe your uh, cup of, your bowl of milk, you know, as you pour it on your Cheerios, right? And, and, your, and your bowl's rolling over, but I don't say this again. God is a God of Love. overflow. Love. Overflow, yes. God is a God of overflow. 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 And I already said this once. He desires for us to have life overflowing. But overflowing with what? Uh -huh. Grace, mercy, and love. Yep, provision. that's good. That's provision. But there's something else to this that, that encompasses all that. Okay. Here's the problem. Too many of us. But here's a, let me go back to David. One, one. I, I guess I'll say one example of pride is someone who's full of themselves. Mm -hmm. When you're full of yourself, there's no room. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. So what we see here is that when we think about being filled now, we're going to be overflowing with the character. Let's go back to Genesis. In Genesis, in heaven, there was a conversation. Said, "Let's let's make them uh, let's make them in our own image. Let's let's create them." And he did create them. Mm -hmm. He created him and her in the image of them. Who? God. God. Okay. And and so what we see here is that <laughs> when we're being filled, we are being filled by His character we start looking more and more like our father although he's in heaven he's now in us mm -hmm. and the more he's in us the less of us there will be and some of us we need to kind of come to this place in our life where we're saying you know lord i want there to be seen more of you less of me mm -hmm. john the baptist said something like this yeah. but we have to we need to realize what that means mm -hmm. some of us that's such a tall order you go into hiding. That's not what he's saying. No. If you're going to be hidden, I'll, I'll give you a couple of uh, a thing of, uh, of pictures to, to imagine. If you're going to hide, you'll hide in the shadow of the cross. If you're going to hide, you're going to hide in the shadow of his wings. If you're going to hide, you're going to hide in the fact that it is the light of Christ that's shining through you. And when the light of, of God and the light of Christ is shining through you, others can't quite see you anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. That doesn't take you out of the picture. It just means they're going to see more of him and less of you. Amen? Amen? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about this. He desires for us to have a life that is overflowing with his character. I mean, just picture this if you can. Having so much hope inside, you can't keep it. Having so much peace it starts spilling over the edges. Having so much godly love, mm -hmm. saturating every, every time you go around, something happens. Somebody gets a, you, some, you walk by somebody and it's, 
I got a little mist on me. What was that? It was the love of God. Amen. I mean, can you imagine that? Can you imagine if your life was like that? You know, I, I remember in the Bible, it talked about something. And part of the imagery I saw was when the disciples came, it talked about their shadows. People would get healed just because their shadows were there. What that meant was that it wasn't that, listen, they're standing here. The sun's over here. They're over there. there was, no, it basically it was telling us because their presence, when they came, people were healed. Yes. People were changed because of their presence. And it wasn't them. It was the fact that God was filling them. It was the presence of God that was with them, that was in them and all around them and spewing out of every pore of their body. God was overflowing from within them. And that beginning of the overflow of life is, 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 a, is unshakably the identity of God that is sustained by intimacy. Oh, wait a minute, intimacy. Now we're talking about stuff most of us, are, we have a tough time with. More marriages, more friendships are broken because of the lack of true intimacy. But have you ever noticed that when you have real friends, true friends, have a real relationship, people know your secrets, but they seem to stick around. Why? <laughs> is it because you're all that, or is it because they're all of what I'm talking about? See, the idea here is God loves you so much. He comes to you as you are, but he won't leave you. you I, I, listen, if he comes to you, you can't stay the way you've been. Yeah. If he comes to you, really, he's uh, irresistible. Mm -hmm. He is irresistible. And did you know when you start taking on his character? Did you notice that other, other people start being attracted to something about you? Mm-hmm. You know, you might you you might you might be all you know uh, toothless and bald, um, and, and and all all kinds of different shapes. Out of there's nothing. Watch this. There's nothing lovely about you, except there's something about you, and that something about you is presence of the Lord. Presence of the Lord. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're thanking the wrong person. Yeah, that, that out of the abundance of the mouth, the mouth speaks pride. He's talking about the bald headedness. Oh, bald headedness. And, and no teeth. <laughs> but do you understand what I'm saying? Don't listen. When we, we receive the fullness from Him, when our fullness is from God, when we receive that, we get freed from burdens. We get freed from the burden of performance. Oh, I wish I, I wish I had the video. Um, it talked about the character of a lion. Um, let me. I, 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 I can. I can. I can recite just some pieces, and maybe one of these Thursdays. I'll, I'll play it some Thursday. But um, it was a. Uh, uh, it, it was a coach speaking to his. Um, his teammates, there's his team, he's speaking to his team. And they're coming up against a team that is much bigger than they are, faster than they are. These are little guys coming up against the big guys. And, and he starts talking about, listen, you need to have the attitude of a lion. Mm -hmm. See, the lion, he's not the biggest of the jungle. The elephant's bigger. Mm -hmm. The lion, he's not the fastest in the jungle. The leopard or the cheetah is faster. But when the lion shows up, something happens. When the lion shows up, the elephant thinks, run. And he's bigger. Amen? You have to have the attitude of a lion. When the, when the, when the lion shows up, the cheetah thinks, run. Yeah. You have to have the attitude of a lion. Did you know that Jesus was seen as a lion? But he's also seen seen as the lamb yeah how does that work these are one of those things i say oh, well, okay this doesn't make sense but it does when you come to know the character of god in christ and this this is the character of god that's in christ who is supposed to be in us mm -hmm. you and me he's supposed to be there right 
intimacy with God does something for us. If you find yourself being anxious and worrisome, and every one of us, we're going to have those moments. And uh, over the last couple of weeks, if not months, I've had to remind myself of these things. But if you have a, a real relationship with God, He's going to fill you with love. He's going to fill you with hope. He's going to fill you with peace. He's going to fill you with kindness. He's all of the rich things that God wants to give us. And when we receive our fullness from him, then we are freed from that burden of performance. Well, I can't read well. I can't talk well. I can't this. I can't that. Stop focusing on all the things that you can't do and start saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. As long as you stay, as long as you accentuate the negative, you'll stay that way. Does that mean that if um, if you can't keep beat, if you can't keep rhythm, you can't sing on key, that that's going to fix those things? Probably not. And some people are going to say, "Man, I wish they'd realize they can't sing on key. Just sing louder. Yeah, that fixes it all." Like three points. <laughs> Here, I want you, let, me, let me give you this, because we're talking about something. First off, let's go back to Ephesians. The gift of salvation. The fullness of God in Christ in us. It's a free gift. It's something God wants to give to us. It, it's, and get this. God doesn't ask you to earn his fullness. Now, does that mean you can sit back on your laurels and do nothing? No, it does not. <laughs> Faith without works? Yeah. It's stupid, okay? Yep. Um, you guys are being nice. <laughs> Here's the thing. This fullness that God is offering you, this fullness that David had, it was a free gift. David didn't have to earn it. It was just given to him. Did you hear that? Yes. It's a gift. It's called grace. And grace has been allowed around for a long time. As long as God has been God, there's always been grace. And after grace comes mercy. He's a, he's a merciful God. Amen? Amen? Jesus already earned all this for us. And as we're coming up this coming week in Palm Sunday, the Holy Week, I hope that some of us, we can stop for a minute because too many of us in the church today, it's, we're, just looking, we're just looking to get to Easter and hunt some, find some Easter eggs and you know have a, have a little party and let the kids get dressed up nice and pretty and, and, and then everybody go home and, and back to business as usual. Can I tell you right now, from me, I am stirred. I am, I, I, did you hear what I'm telling you? I am stirred up. I'm looking forward to this, this coming week. I'm looking forward to what Easter is going to mean for us because I already know what it means. Too many of us, we've forgotten what Jesus did, what price was paid to give you what you so desire and so need. Amen? So see, Jesus earned all this, so we're able to operate in God's joy as, as his ambassadors. We're, we're able to live and act like his children. Some of us, we need to realize, we're acting more like spoiled brats. <laughs> you might be a king's kid, but you can't be you, you have to be acting like more like the king than you are the prince or princess that you think you are. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing to think about in regards to him as a lord and king. He's noble. He's kind. He's meek, but he's certainly not weak. No, he is not. So when we start experiencing the joy of being his children, and we're pouring, and this, listen to what I'm telling you, pouring out to others that which we've received freely. So many I know, and T, I'm sure you know some too, some, some of our, our friends that have come up making their way through the ranks and they study and, and they go and they, they take the exam and, and they, once they get that paper and they get that, that um, uh, those credentials, suddenly they think they're owed something and those are the ones, I don't see them anymore. You don't hear from them anymore. Why? Because they left that which they say they love. Right, 
The idea is you need to get to a place in your life where you can start pouring out to others what God has given to you. Here's the thing. You can't pour out anything that you don't that you don't have. Right. You can't pour out anything you don't have. Up until just a few moments ago, I sat here on this stool. I just wanted to go lay down. I was thinking of going over on a pew and, you know, saying, Sister Linda, you got it. But then I realized that, you know. She didn't have it. She doesn't have it. I'm supposed to be the one to have it. And you're going to have these times when pouring out to others make you feel drained. Make you feel depleted. But if you know God like I know God, there's more where that came from. Mm -hmm. The one who began a work is faithful. He finished that work. Mm -hmm. But if you find yourself at the end of your rope, some people, what's happened is they, 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 they give up and they got out. And the reason they did is because it, they, they weren't getting enough from others like they thought they should get. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen is uh, you need to start looking to the one who's going to provide for all, Amen. you and others. Yes. I mean, is the pressure to perform for God or others what drives you? Just to be honest, I'm a bit competitive sometimes. No. <laughs> but there's a reason for that. You have to be in certain areas. Yeah. But there are times to know when to back off. There, there's a reason that the little, the little guy from Hamilton, Ohio, worked his way up and married probably the most beautiful woman in all of Kalamazoo, got the prettiest gals, prettiest daughters in the face of the planet, if I do say so myself. Uh, <laughs> am I getting prideful? But let me tell you what, God gave me those. Yeah. Part of my testimony is when I was a teenager, that's what I asked for. I learned a lesson. I wish I'd learned it sooner. <laughs> Hello? Amen. Maybe in the 70s. <laughs> well, how can you tell the difference between when you're striving, when you're putting all this effort forward, and when you're overflowing? Sometimes what happens is that we're working so hard at something and when we don't get what we expect to get for our investment, we get discouraged. Yes. But there are some of us that say, you know what? I guess I have to go a little farther. Mm -hmm. And I know that God's going to see me to the next level. Yes. Around the next bend, over the next mountaintop. Mm -hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he's going to get me through there. I mean, do you believe that God is pleased with you simply because you're a new creation in Christ? No. I mean, just take take. I'm going. To, we're going to. We're going to. We're going to, We are going to close here in just a moment because I'm going to read Romans 15, um, fifteen thirteen again as a kind of a benediction, but. Do you believe that God is pleased with you simply because you're a new creature, a new creation in Christ? Or do you not believe that's the case? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this night, for the food we've had tonight, for the fellowship. For your, for your word, the bread of life, truly manna from heaven. And that, Lord, you do more than sustain us. You carry us on. The word of God says that, that you save to the uttermost. What does that mean, Lord? To me, it means overflowing. Yes. Tonight, Lord, I bless these people who are here and for those who hear this message. And my prayer is that may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust him so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.